If you're a business owner or want to become a business owner, whether online or retail, if you're in the service industries and have customers and clients, or if you're an entrepreneur, this special bonus episode of the Michael Yardney podcast is just for you. Are you interested in property investing, success or money? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Michael Yardney podcast, where each week you'll learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment and money in 20 minutes or less. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect and pass on your wealth through strategic property advice. Now here's your host, Michael Yardney, who has once again been voted Australia's leading property investment advisor. That's the fourth time he's won a similar award in the last six years. I know most regular listeners to my podcast are interested in property investment, but many of them are in business or in service industries or are entrepreneurs. So this special bonus episode is one that I recorded a short while ago with my business coach, Mark Creeden, and I wanted to share it with you And it's going to be especially useful for you if you're a business owner or want to become a business owner, whether it's owning a retail store, an online business, a side business while you've got a real job. It'll be particularly interesting for you if you're in the service industries, whether you're a a service professional of any sort, or whether it's a real estate agent, a, a health professional, somebody who's selling their services. And it's going to be particularly interesting for entrepreneurs, because we're going to discuss the three reasons why the best business owners, entrepreneurs, and service professionals are crushing it while most are struggling. So welcome to this special bonus podcast, where I pulled out an old interview from the vault that I thought was so valuable that I wanted to share it with all my podcast subscribers. Because you're going to hear me speak with Mark Creeden, who for many years has been my business coach and now my business partner in a number of my businesses, including Metropole Business Advisory. But Mark still coaches me. And we're going to discuss the three reasons why the best business owners and the best entrepreneurs are crushing it today, while most are struggling. We're also going to talk about the three critical questions questions that have you've got to ask yourself as a business owner or if you want to be an entrepreneur. We're going to talk about the common traits successful business people, entrepreneurs and investors share and what they do differently to the average Australian. We're going to go through some of the big stumbling blocks that hold investors and business people back and show you how to get around them. So let's listen to the recording I did a while ago with Mark Creeden. noticed, it's tough out there at the moment for business owners, for entrepreneurs, and actually for many people in professional practices as well. Having said that, though, while many are struggling, some business owners just seem to be crushing it. So what can we learn from these successful business people? Today, that's actually the topic of our discussion as I'm joined by Mark Creeden, Director of Metropole Business Advisory. So before I go any further, can I say welcome, Mark, to this webcast? Thank you, Michael. Good to be here. Now, for those of you who don't know Mark, he's been coaching small and medium business owners to success for for well over a decade. But today, Mark has become the business coach to some of Australia's leading entrepreneurs, including the team at Metropole. In fact, he's uh, been my business coach for quite a while. But last year, at our annual five-day advanced workshop, Wealth Retreat, his sessions helping business people, business owners, build real a bit, real business rather than just a job. Boy, was it such a hit. And the transformation I've seen in his coaching, creating his clients a real business as well as my own, what I ended up doing after that was I actually invited Mark to be my business partner in a new division we recently set up, Metropole Business Advisory. So, Mark, with all that and the information of dealing with businesses for so long, maybe you could give us some insight into why are some of the best business owners and entrepreneurs really crushing it this year while the majority of them are struggling? Yeah, it's a great question, Michael. You know, people often think that there's a, there's a multitude of reasons, but in my experience working with some of the most successful business people that I, that I work with, is there's really only, only three reasons, uh, and they're, they're nice and simple. The first one is that the people who are really crushing it have absolute clarity. They know exactly what they want. They've got crystal clear goals and plans in place. 
the other thing is that they have they've got the right mindset. So they not only do they know uh, what they want to achieve, they know how they're going to get there, and they've got this success mindset. So you know, I often say, for example, you're saying Bolt doesn't stand at the starting blocks, uh, thinking that maybe he might have a chance of, of winning the hundred meter race. So they have this absolute winning mindset in place. And then the third thing um, is that they actually make sure that they have infrastructure and systems in place. And they, and they know that uh, whatever they, they're going to do, they, they're actually set up to scale and grow their business. So they get the business to the point where it's less reliant on them. And, and that's very much on point with the comment you made before about actually owning a business rather than buying themselves a job. So they're the three secrets that I see people applying um, who really have great success in their business. Well, Mark, let's unpack a couple of those. They've got clarity, you said. They've got vision. I agree with you there. They know what they want. And I've found that people who have got a vision, have got a mission, have got a purpose, their reticular activating system, that bit of the brain that filters out all the extraneous noise and helps you focus on what you need to do works better. Because if you don't have it clear in your mind, it's just too easy to get distracted in today's busy world, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it is very easy to get distracted. The other thing too, Michael, is it's like any journey that you're going on. If you don't have a crystal clear picture of exactly where you want to end up, uh, then there's a very good chance that, that you'll end up somewhere completely different. So in terms of clarity, I see you know business people who say, well, I'm in business because I want uh, more money or I want more free time or I want more toys or whatever, more property, whatever it might be. Um, the, the people who are really successful have absolute clarity. So I want to be able to turn over X amount of money with X amount of money as retained profit. I want to work so many hours a week. I want to build an asset that is worth a certain figure at the end of a defined period of time. So clarity really comes down right through from understanding what, what the why they're in business all the way through to exactly what they want to achieve and how they're going to get there. That's a good point, Mark, because when you speak to most people, they actually don't have that clarity. They say, I want a big property portfolio, or I want a successful business, or I want financial freedom, but they actually don't know exactly what that is. So how do you know you're heading there, and actually how will you know when you're there, Mark? Uh, and that, that's exactly right. It's, as I said, it's like any journey. If you don't have clarity to it, um, and I've had people in the past say to me, you know, I ask them what they wanted for their business, and the answer is more money. Um, well, you know, that, that, that's easy. The, the, the more money is the easy thing. Uh, you, you can give them a dollar, they've got more money. But that's, that's not really what they're in business for, obviously. So it is getting it down to crystal clarity. Sure. The other is having the right mindset, you said. Now, all of successful business people I'm dealing with at the moment who are crushing it, I've noticed they're working even harder on their psychology because the more they win, the further up they go, they actually push themselves out of their comfort zone again. They get into a new area of fear, of anxiety, asking yourself, am I actually good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I going to cope? So I find that they keep needing to upgrade their psychology. They spend more and more time on this every day. It's not rah-rah stuff to them, is it, Mark? No, it's not. Um, they, they do spend uh, more and more time on it, and they spend dedicated time on it. I was actually talking with a client yesterday, a very successful business person, and we were having this very conversation where he was saying the thing that he needs to do is to constantly push himself out of his comfort zone, constantly checking that he's not self-sabotaging somewhere along the line, and so he's constantly asking about his thinking process. So the psychology of success is vitally important in business, Having the mindset is one thing, and I, I used the Usain Bolt example before that he doesn't get in on the starting blocks and just think that, you know, hopefully maybe I can win this race. Not only does he have this absolute mindset of success and winning, but he also works on it, and, and you know, successful people work on that on a daily basis, Michael. Well, I think they also have mentors. They surround themselves with a good group of people. And, uh, I mean, there's networking functions, but most of those are pretty wasted. You've actually got to hang around with the right people. Um, and that's actually hard. I think once you get to a particular level, a lot of business people feel isolated. 
yeah, isolation is a really big thing. So for me, at, at networking events, um, you, you can still be quite isolated in a, in a busy room at a networking event as well because a lot of networking events are really around uh, sort of, you know, comparisons and one-upmanship as opposed to genuine support. So the thing that successful people do is, yes, you know, they, they have a coach, they have a mentor, they have advisors, uh, and they have a group of peers around them that not only drive them but also keep them accountable. So there's that there's the there's the, the push process going on, but then there's also the checks and balances happening in accountability yeah. as well. I'm laughing, Mark, because you're my unreasonable friend, and you ring me up and you see my blind spots, and I guess that's what a, a mentor does and what a coach does. Um, and I think the other thing is hanging around the right people. So if you're the, a sporty person, bike riders will hang around other bike riders, and they'll be fit, and they'll go to the gym, and they'll get up at five a.m. But that's one of the reasons we get out of the real world once a year, me and my team personally, you as part of our team now and in the previous capacity as a coach and with a small group of our high net worth clients and yours as well on the Gold Coast for Wealth Retreat at the end of May every year. And I think what I've found is by putting other people into a room with other movers and shakers, they... And and, and there's no having to show off and there's no having to uh, be better than the other like you see at some of these networking events. I think the atmosphere there uh, really allows people to learn from each other and grow. There's a great great sort of tribal learning uh, atmosphere at Wealth Retreat where sort of egos are checked at the door. And everybody is there to, to learn. They learn, they're there to learn from the faculty. Um, but equally importantly, they're actually there to learn from each other. And there's a massive amount of support. And Michael, you would have seen this over the years that often, you know, when people are having lunch together or having a coffee at morning tea or afternoon tea or even afterwards, there's lots of people getting together and they're comparing notes and talking about they're supporting and helping each other and they're listening to each other's goals and ambitions and, and talking about how they can actually help them and, and to keep them accountable and support them both at Wealth Retreat and, of course, post the event as well. Sure. Well, I guess you're in an interesting position, Mark, because the first year you came along as an attendee, the first year you came along, and then you came along with Caroline, your wife, and your business partner, and I know that that changed things, and then you came along as a presenter, and you wowed them, and in fact, so many people were interested in what you talked about, about business, that there wasn't enough time. I remember last year we put on two extra... um, uh, sessions with, with, with you, some extra bonus uh, sessions, some, I guess, breakout sessions, but it was embarrassing because there were more people in the breakout session <laughs> than with the other speakers. <laughs> so what, what, what do you think all that comes down to? I think the thing about Wealth and Treat, Michael, is that um, it's, it's hands-on, it's not theory, it's not a talk fest. So the things that we present at Wealth Retreat are real. Uh, people actually get all of the tools, the skills, the resources they need. They get all the cheat sheets, all the information, um, and they kind of get the recipe for the secret sauce to be able to take that away and apply it in their business. So the whole concept of Wealth Retreat is giving people the information, but one step further, showing them how they can use that and then supporting them on that journey to actually apply it and, and bring about the change in their business and in, and in their life. Yep. Now, Mark, I want to get back in a moment to talk a bit about how successful business people stay at the top of their game because you gave me a couple of outlines there about their clarity, their mindset, the infrastructure and systems. We'll speak a bit more about that in a second. But if we just spend one more minute talking about wealth retreat, if I, if I could, I guess the concept of wealth retreat came around because a lot of our high net worth clients were wanting more things that weren't on the internet, things that weren't in the books. And so the concept really is to help our clients grow maintain and protect and pass on their wealth, leaving a lifetime legacy. And more than half the people who come along to Wealth Retreat are really in a business or professional practice of some sort. So we don't only talk about property, it's not a property seminar, and we don't talk about wealth in the terms of how many dollars you've got, but uh, it really is the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So it helps people uh, get a better understanding of all these things, Mark. Yeah, it absolutely does, and it shows them how they can uh, be successful in in one area of their life. So, for example, it might be in their business, and then how they can take that success and, and transpose it across to what they do in their in their property business as well. And and the whole idea of it, of course, is you know more money, more time, more freedom, 
but the ability to then have choices in, in how they live their life generally. So the whole idea of, of Wealth Retreat, as I said, is, is that it, it is hands-on, and I think that's a really important difference between Wealth Retreat and, and a lot of the other events that I've been to, which really are sort of rah-rah sessions. This is real hands-on, uh, as I said, secret source stuff, and uh, people can walk away and, and actually apply it in all aspects of, of their life. That they've, that they've been so well for rather people. than nothing to sell there, you've got as much one-on-one -on -one time as you want with uh, the, the um, faculty as well. Now, we started talking a bit about you breaking up in your points into the, the clarity, the right mindset. You also talked about the infrastructure and systems that people build to get their businesses going. And I, I think what I've found is that as people grow, sometimes their infrastructure, the services, their contact management system, the support mechanism they've got doesn't allow them to grow efficiently. They're not set up to grow. And all that happens is they become a slave to their business. They seem to work harder to make it work effectively when they, that's not actually what they were trying to do. They were trying to build a business, not a job. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a, an unusual outcome because it, that's exactly what happens. People often come up with the idea of starting a business and they think that, that they're going to buy themselves freedom for that with that, but what they end up doing is, in fact, buying themselves a job. Michael, I was having a conversation with, with somebody this morning, in fact, and, and we were talking about um, scaling the business and getting the business to a point, and it's a brand-new business. And, and I was saying to her that uh, ultimately she wants to be in a business which is scalable, that doesn't rely on them as heavily. Uh, and the point that I was making is that in order for that to happen within a defined period of time, whether it's 12 months, two years, three years, whatever it may be, we need to actually put those plans in place now, which is exactly what you're saying. If we don't plan for that now, we're suddenly going to get to this point where if we're trading time for money, for example, we've sort of reached the ceiling and to try and scale from that position is exceptionally hard work. Whereas if we're scaling as part of a plan that we set up at the very outset, then it's simply it's, it's a natural transition that we've been working toward the whole time. And I think that's a really important um, a really important difference if you're going to get a business which has that scalability into it is to have that locked into the plans in the first place. Well, I know personally having a, a national business, you, you get stuck and you get uh, into ro roadblocks and things get in the way. How have you found successful businesses stay on top of their game, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the first thing is that um, when we talk about having clarity for the goals, they, the next clarity is one thing, the next step is commitment. So they decide what it is that they want to achieve and we break it down to, uh, say, for the next 12 months, and they get absolute clarity around that, and then they they commit to it. So I love people that have uh, planning boards on their walls. Uh, Michael, if you could see my walls here in my office, I've got planning boards all over my walls. I've got sprint planners, um, all the sort of tools that we'll, that we'll share with you at Wealth Retreat, by the way. But uh, they've got these plans that have got absolute clarity around what they're going to do and also commitment to the process, and they lock in time in their calendar to actually work on their business. So that's the first thing. Mark, when I first saw these vision boards and I uh, went to seminars years ago, I thought that was all sort of rah-rah stuff that you put a vision board of the car you want to have and the house you want to live in and where you go on holidays. I'm not sure that that's exactly what you're talking about, but I think that getting it up and visual and your goals in front of you, um, it does give you a filter to outline all the white, white to, to avoid all the white noise, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And the thing about those vision boards, Michael, I agree with you that potentially just a vision board that just has, uh, you know, pictures of the car you want or the holiday you want, et cetera, that's, that's a dream or a hope. But if you add to that a commitment process, then suddenly it's no longer a dream or a hope. It's actually a plan. And so that's okay, really... So one of the big questions people ask themselves is, what exactly am I committed to? And then they focus on that. What that's other exactly things right. do, do these successful people do, Mark? We spoke about mindset before, so one of the big things they do is have some rituals. So they actually um, set aside some time. They lock time into their calendar. Uh, one of the things I do, Mike, I said at the beginning of the year, and I actually lock in time in, in my calendar when I'm going to work on me, where I'm going to spend some time on my mindset, where I'm going to spend some time on my psychology. So uh, they have rituals to help them get through those times. They go to seminars. They read books. Um, obviously, you know, they, they do things like come to Wealth Retreat and spend five days surrounded with other people who are looking to do exactly the same thing. And, and they have those rituals uh, locked in. And 
if you do that and, and in those rituals you have sort of, you know, abundance thinking, positive mindset processes uh, and all of those in place, then as you say, it, it helps you to block out the white noise or the negative space that can sometimes creep in. I just want to make things clear that for people who are listening to this and we keep talking about mindset and rituals, Wealth Retreat is very, very far from a rah-rah session where we don't dance on tables and we don't massage other people's shoulders uh, and things like that. But in fact, uh, there is the, the initial bit that does surprise some people when we first do it and at the end they say, gee, that was important. If you didn't do those initial sessions about why, why I am where I am today, I wouldn't be able to take on all the great information. So we do start off looking a little bit at your headspace and your mindset but what we do is we wring out the, the sponge of all the negative emotions or the, the unproductive habits and implant a whole lot of new productive habits and behaviours and then we give you a toolkit full of tools to help you achieve whatever it is you want in the share trading, in business, in property investment, in finance so that's important and I guess what I've learned over the years is I do have to schedule time aside for myself and I've learned to... Look, I think... Uh, um, uh, who wrote Seven Habits? Steve Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It was one of his habits too, wasn't it? That wealthy people, successful people, sharpen their saw. They spend time sharpening the saw to be able to be more successful. And this is what I yeah, suggest... Okay. Everyone should do. I, I know I do it. I spend time... So I set time aside to get me through the rough times, to help me persevere, to read books, to go to seminars, to have coaches and to have accountability. So any other important things that the wealthy, successful business people do to keep ahead? Well, yeah, Michael, and can I just say, haven't we seen some phenomenal breakthroughs in those very early sessions that you do at Wealth Retreat? So where we actually do, as you say, wring out the sponge of negativity, and haven't we seen people then be able to remove all those negative thoughts in those sessions, then power on with you know the real stuff that we get into in relation to how they how they improve their business and how they improve their their, their property portfolio and their investing strategy? Uh, haven't we seen some just some phenomenal breakthroughs with people in those early sessions? That is amazing, so, and again, these and in general, not beginners. Now. People who are listening to this shouldn't count themselves out saying, look, I better not go because I'm not a multi-multi-millionaire. So while there's a lot of successful people come to Wealth Retreat, about 25% every year are return attendees. And there's a small group of people who aren't there yet but want to be, and we love having them because that gives them great breakthroughs as well. But the breakthroughs you talked about a second ago, Mark, are very much uh, coming from people who are already successful. And it just proves the point that I occasionally make that you're driving around with one foot on the accelerator and one on the brake. And when they take that foot off the brake, boy, does the car go even faster. Yeah, absolutely. And we certainly see that. Michael, I think the third thing that really successful business people do is, is they think about um, what systemic change is going to be required in order to uh, sustain the new level of growth. So we, we spoke before about um, understanding where they want their business to be, understanding some systems and processes and planning for that at the very outset. But the, the idea is to, is to build that infrastructure and systems at the outset and then continue to adjust it. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of innovation. So whether the innovation is in technology, whether it's in people management skills, whether it's in management skills, communication, etc., cetera, um, making sure that we're constantly innovating, that we're thinking about if, if we do get these new levels of growth, then how are we going to run the business other than by simply putting more hours into it? So, you know, I, I've often started working with people, Michael, and you, you'll, you'll know this, and they've got a very successful business, which has grown phenomenally, but they're working 60, 80, 80 hours a week. They never yeah. see their family. They don't have any time. They never see friends, et cetera. And, and yet if we can show them that they've put these systems in place, they've got some tools to be able to systemize things, suddenly they can make the same amount of money and have the same success in their business, but without working the 60 to 80 hours a week. So to me, it's, it's focusing on a, a few projects at a time, and we've got a little project planner that we take people through, and we'll share that at Wealth Retreat as well, uh, where they can actually prioritise and schedule a couple of projects a month. Uh, they delegate things to their team. They empower their team. Again, we'll talk about that at Wealth Retreat. And in order to be able to achieve that level of growth without them having to sort of work harder and harder and harder at it. 
That's really interesting, Mark, because I guess the question is, what happens if you actually do achieve the level of growth in your business that you want, but you keep running the business the way you used to when it was half the size? All that you end up doing is working harder, or you're not giving your clients, your customers, your patients the level of service uh, that, that they expect or that you desire to give them. So you're right, you do have to keep working on that. Look, Mark, thanks for spending the time. I guess the bottom line I'm getting from this is, Business is tough out there for many business owners, many entrepreneurs. They're struggling. They're just feeling like they're in the rat race. But that's probably because they're not asking themselves the right questions. They haven't got the right clarity, and they're not hanging around the right people. So if you're in those categories, or if you're already really, really successful and you want to get to the next level, my suggestion is to go to wealthretreat.com.au. Don't count yourself out. Have a look and see all about it. There's lots of information on that website, probably a bit too much. So just register your interest because what we do is we speak to everyone who's planning to come along. We explain to them about the five days they've got to set aside at the Gold Coast. Now, if you're a business person and we've got a lot of tax and accounting and other advice and structuring and coaching advice, you may even find some of it or all of it could be tax deductible. But the concept is we're going to speak to you first to make sure it works. And Mark, this year I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm actually going to guarantee the success of it. So if we choose to believe that you should be there and at your, the time you spend doesn't give you the answers or the information you want, we're going to still give you as many one-on-one -on -one sessions as you require to make sure that you get all your reasonable questions answered. And afterwards, you will have an implementation session with me to make sure we can implement it. And if you're in business with Mark, Mark, I haven't actually asked you this before. I'm going to ask you now, are you prepared to commit to speak to every business person afterwards and give them a personal implementation session? I can't even say the word because I put you on the spot. <laughs> of course I am. Of course I am. Absolutely. And that's the only way that we can make sure that, uh, that they do actually succeed. And the whole concept of Wealth Retreat is to get them there, get them to learn, and then get them to implement it so that they have the success that they're looking for. Fantastic. So go to wealthretreat.com.au. Mark, thank you very much for uh, your, your time on this session. And uh, actually, I've got a couple of other questions about the business I'd like to ask you. So can we run another one of these sessions in a couple of weeks' time, please? Fantastic. Love to. Thanks for listening to this special bonus episode of my podcast where we discussed the three big reasons why the best business owners and entrepreneurs are crushing it today. I hope you got some value from it. And if you're serious about taking your business or your business of investing to the next level, then why don't you join us at Wealth Retreat? We're going to be surrounded by a group of like-minded, successful business people, entrepreneurs and investors. We're going to be immersed for five days in the best information we can give you to get you from where you are to where you want to get to and you're going to be able to have as many one-on-one -on -one sessions with the faculty and you're going to get so much information from the people around you. I look forward to having you with me at Wealth Retreat this year in June. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect, and pass on their wealth through strategic property advice. If you got value from listening to this podcast, please leave us a review and we'll read it out on a future show. Just go to michaelyardneypodcast.com forward slash review, and it will take you over to iTunes where you can enter a review and let us know what you think. We'd really appreciate it. If you don't already subscribe on iTunes or on your Android, Android phone, you'll find us there as Michael Yardney Podcast. If you'd like to gain instant access to the show notes or a transcript of the show, head across to michaelyardneypodcast.com. Watch out for our show next week. you learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 20 minutes.